something's going on Someone's on the phone It's three o'clock in the morning Well, talking about How she can make it right, yeah Hey <laughs> Well, happiness is when You feel good with somebody Nothing wrong with being in love with someone. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, baby. Love and happiness. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All the I love being black. <laughs> the right Reverend Albert Green. <laughs> oh yes, Al Green. He gives me fond memories of childhood because I told I think I told you all that my very first uh job was on a Mr. Softy truck that my uncle owned. And he would only play Al Green from the speakers. He would not play the ice cream truck music. <laughs> Blackest, the blackest ice cream truck ever known to man. It is <laughs> by a man who spoke the slowest Spanish. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you have ever heard in your life. He'd be like, "Buenos dias." Oh, esta es tío. Oh my gosh, I'm like, well, I will get get out of here. Hurry up. He was thinking. How are he you? was thinking. All the time. Bless his heart. You know what? I, I was Brit told. You know, I say bless his heart a lot. And I was talking to one of my guy friends. And I said, bless, his, bless, bless your heart to him. And he got big mad about it. Why? He was like, it's like tap. It's like you pat me on my head. It's basically like sunning. Somebody without like patrons. Yeah, but I'm just like I didn't. I, I've never intended to patronize. It's just like, oh, but I. I mean, not in a <laughs> condescending kind of way. But he was telling me that he was deathly afraid of roller coasters, and I was shocked because I'm talking about a sizable black man. Right? <laughs> so, well, that sounds like a bless your heart moment felt to me. Like, you know. I don't think he'll ever hear this. Even if he does, it's fine. I was just like, I personally, I just felt like he was too big and too black to be afraid <laughs> of a roller coaster. <laughs> Howsoever, when I said, you know, so I was taken aback when he mentioned it. Um, so, and I just didn't know what else to say aside from like... Bless your heart. Yeah, I was like, bless your heart. You are just afraid. Bless your heart right now. Like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> But he was just like, that's the most offensive thing you've ever said to me. I was like, what? I okay, all right. Let's. Well, I, I would have been like, well, I got a few more up my like, sleeve. Well, let's see if I can push these I limits. I was, I was trying to be like understanding. I was like, well, walk, walk me through the process. Like, how do we get, I don't know. Like, people have been saying, bless your heart to me all my life. And I never once thought that they meant yeah, I don't, like it, I don't know, but that's neither here nor there. We are just rambling on. Good morning and praise the Lord, niggas. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Getting Grown with Jade and Kia. I'm Kia. Oh, happy day. I'm Jade. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> um, we talk about adulting here. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly, the test, the, the trials, the twists, the turns, the temptations and the taxes of being a real live adult in the year of our Lord, 2018. I am not really uh, winning at adulting this week, especially. I only made up my bed one time this week, and I just feel like that is just unacceptable. <laughs> I'm ashamed. I'm actually, <laughs> Sometimes I'm actually like quite ashamed of myself. Um, and I'm also, I was talking to Fran and XD earlier today about how I'm like acting like I'm in the 11th grade all over again because I've been buying sneakers like a child. Like I just, I love sneakers. Ooh. And recently, like within the past few weeks, I've purchased several pairs 
of sneakers. And I'm just like, I don't know what's <laughs> going on with me, but here we are. So, yeah. What, what'd you get? I got yeah. a pair, of, you know, I got the Vapor Max. I got a pair of mm. ones. Yes. I got a pair of the Air Max 270s, which are literally like walking on Jesus. Mm. It's like Ooh, like my Adidas cloud foams. Oh, you get a whole new set of feet. You put them on. And I also bought a very obnoxious pair of fuzzy slides. <laughs> <laughs> and I just can't wait. I just can't wait. I bought a pair last year. I didn't. I was kind of testing the waters. So I just bought like a pair out of Urban Outfitters. They were like a cheap pair. And I love them. So I went ahead and splurged on like the real fur f- slides. The Puma um, joints. I got uh, the Puma. Well, I don't have the Puma. No, not the Puma joints. These are, it's by a company called Wonder Fur. Oh. Oh, um, like some real fur slides. Some fur slides. Some fur slides, right? I love them. They were on, I, I saw them on Instagram. Um, somebody that I follow in Louisiana, they sent her a pair and she just reposted them. And I was just like, oh, and I checked out the website and I was like, these are like actual fur and they're, they weren't like millions of dollars. I've seen them. I've seen them for like a hundred dollars, like, you know, upwards of a hundred dollars, but these were under a hundred dollars. So I went ahead and splurged. They came today. I absolutely love them. Oh, don't come in our inbox, vegans. We don't care. Just so you know. Oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> I don't want the Peter nope. people are going to be pissed. But I'm listen, I'm already making a disclaimer right now. Like, don't do it. Like I have time. So don't do like, I have time for that. So don't do I'm it. I'm sorry. We don't uh, but yeah, that's what's going on in my world. Um, just being a child, working really hard and being, I think I'm, you know, working like a dog actually and <laughs> trying to make myself feel better about all the things that are going on in my life by buying sneakers because sneakers make me happy. Well, then you deserve to buy yourself some sneakers. You working hard. Like what else are you going to do? You might as well get yourself some shoes. I mean, I just feel like sensible. It's It's the season of the sensible shoe. And uh, sneakers are all it. it. It's going to be all sneakers and body con fashion oversets for the summer. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I really sincerely hope that nobody, I, I don't know where these functions are that we're going to in Miami next week, but I, or this week, should I say, but I hope that nobody turns me away when they see the sneakers on my feet. I don't imagine. I don't imagine I'm that it'll be a problem. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm like, I just want to warn you all right now. Your girl is not coming out in heels. So you can just wrap that right on up. I'll come in your establishment. I'll be respectful, but I am not putting on high heels. So you can just get that notion. I still love high right heels. Now. I love them very much. I have shelves and shelves filled with beautiful shoes. And I love to look at them every day. You do. You do. Um, and I will wear them. Like I wore a pump all Sunday, all last Sunday. I wore a sand of a heel sandal. All day long, I was just fine. Um, but I just feel like I'm in a space where, I, I mean, a sneaker just is just what the doctor ordered. I was out with some of my friends. This was a few months ago. I had a makeup job um, in D.C. And I looked around the room. It was my friend. One of my friends was turning 35. And she did a photo shoot for all of her friends um, as a part of her birthday celebration. And we were just in there doing makeup and I looked around the room and everyone had on the same thing. It was like, we were all wearing a uniform. Everyone had a, a beat face, accessories, a, a little cute bodycon dress or like a skirt in a shirt or some jeans in a shirt and a fabulous sneaker. I'm like, is this <laughs> like, a, like <laughs> just not just like a regular gym sneaker, but like yeah, the girls I'm- are now shopping for sneakers. And I'm just like, sign me up, no, sign we're grown. me up. Fran was like, friend was like girl if i were to show you how many how many pairs of sneakers i had purchased uh and i put a, I put a pair on my ig stories today and she was like the 270s i have these too oh my god like we were just holy connecting <laughs> we were connecting over the sneakers it was it was a it was a moment it was a moment <laughs> oh i miss my sneakerhead days i just bought maybe four pairs of sneakers i'm fully back man i got myself, the sneaker app but, on my phone uh, I'm getting notified of with the release dates. I'm like fully invested. <laughs> Let me tell you, sis. Let me tell you something real quick, right quick. Anybody, PVA, if you all spot a pair of 
Air Max 97 Wetherspoons for your girl. What I, size? Like, that is the, like, that is what I want. Okay. I'd like them in an eight to, or an eight and a half. But when I tell you them things are nowhere to be found oh, let me under tell you, a million dollars. The Air Max 97, <laughs> the gold ones, you know, the silver ones, they're coming out next month. Mm-hmm. My, my thumbs and my PayPal information okay. are perched right. and ready to receive the blessing. Okay. I will keep you abreast. Let me know, sis. Because I, please, because if I can't get the weather spoons, I might as well get something else. And I don't need any more rose gold. I just got some rose gold. My best friend, Nakia, um, she bought me a pair of the Tribe Call Quest uh, Bonita Apple Bum yes, Vans, indeed. which I love those too. But So I've been a little bit on my sneakers, but I'm going to get back to where I was because your girl used to be heavy. I mean, heavy, like exclusives. Like I had a all. Le- yellow leather pair of a lifes like your girl was heavy in the sneaker in, yeah. in the sneaker world Indeed. heavy yeah the weather spoons are now going for like about twenty three hundred dollars a pair <laughs> yeah i'm very upset about that Whoa. i'm not there yet not there yet before we get into any trash and i know we have had a very long intro um <laughs> we did not shout out our brother kid fury oh my word for his appearance in Dear White People Season 2. I wasn't even prepared. I feel like I was in my house, minding my business, living my life, and turned to the... And yes. was just like, what? Yes. That's exactly what like, happened. wait a minute. That's exactly what happened. I was like, this nigga just snuck Didn't in on us. Didn't tell a soul. Didn't so, tell a soul. Congratulations to him. I love him so much, and I'm so, 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 so same, proud same, of you. Same, same, same. want to make sure that we gave you a special shout out. You guys, make sure you check out Dear White People. Season two, so you can see our brother Kid Fury. You can also get on your uh, on demand and check out his episode of Jesus and Miro. He is out here. Our brother's popping right now. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Hennessy. Um, And all the things that are going on with three, the Regas in the middle of a tour. They're on their way to Essence Fest. It's a it's a wonderful time to be alive, and I'm super proud of of both my Fury Nation and my Crystal G. Yes. Uh, so yeah, let's move on into the trash. Let's get into some trash. Making it easy. Hey, for the clean up woman. It is time for the trash. Shout out to our listener, absolutely, who suggested and asked. She said, "Can you please put a sound bite for the trash? Um, maybe clean up woman, which was the perfect suggestion." So shout out to you. That is what it's going to be from here on. Absolutely. Out. Uh, shout out to Betty Wright, honey. <laughs> absolutely yes. we will we we will uh actually there's a special place in my heart for betty Wright. listen making it easy for the cleanup Please. woman to get my baby's love <laughs> <laughs> tell them betty y'all gotta see my homegirl nicole she puts on an entire like dedication to betty Wright uh, in a brown girls burlesque show it is just it's amazing it's everything oh. but anyway let's get into some trash well, they do it <laughs> Um, so Kia, this is actually Kia's submission to the trash Absolutely. this week, which was top number one basura basura caliente. Let them know what it is, sis. So there is a bar company here in the DC area, um, and they are hosting a pop up bar this I think the this week and next this weekend last weekend and this weekend coming. Um that's themed around the royal wedding. So Harry and Meghan, what troubled me the most, uh, so I saw this on Facebook, shout out to Robin for bringing it to my attention. Um, I just, you know, she didn't tell me personally, but I just saw that it, she posted on her page. So they are having a pop-up bar, um, royal wedding themed. And the drink menu had a few drinks on there that made that just did not sit well with my spirit. There is a cocktail called the When Harry Met Megan, and it features a monkey shoulder scotch. <laughs> There's oh, also fuck. a cocktail uh, called Lions and Unicorn that is made with plantation dark rum. Um, and it just didn't sit well with me. It, it caused me to look, you know, my eyebrows, you know, furrowed immediately. I was in a heavy squint. Like this triggered me a bit and I'm, I'm offended and I'm just wondering if I'm warranted in taking offense to this, but I don't know. This seems, I'm sure that people can find all kinds of ways to say that this, this was not 
you know, ill intention, but it just does not sit well with a brown girl like me. So here's the thing about stuff <clears throat> like that. Like when white people, those kind of white people do shit like that. They know exactly what they're doing. And I refuse to sit back here. And I'm not one of those people that's, that, that uses my black card for everything under the sun. But you all and your little bitty ass microaggressions, you think we don't know what the fuck you're doing. We know exactly what you're doing. And the thing is, when we call you out on it, you love to get all big, dear, doe-eyed and wonder why somebody is coming at your neck. And it's because you do little things like that. Like, we're not going to pick up on it. We're very intelligent people. We're very witty people. We are wittier than you. And so, therefore, we're always going to pick up on the little bullshit, snide remarks and little things that you all do. And all of those are very pointed. Like, let's just be very clear. Plantation, plantation, dark rum. I mean, I get that that is a type of rum. It doesn't guess, matter. You know exactly what you're doing. Monkey, exactly. monkey scotch. Yeah, like, that's what I'm on. saying. Why not just say they're scotchy? Like, it's because I don't feel like is Y'all couldn't use some footage. Like, is what monkey, the fuck? Sorry, is Monkey Shoulder the brand? Or, like, I don't know. I just have questions that I just need some clarification. Um, and why that scotch? I don't know. It just seems... It's just, like I said, it didn't sit well with me. So I submitted it as trash because that's what I perceive it to be. Trash. They might, they might as well put a Darkest Stormy on there. Oh, disgusting. So I, I, you all know, like, you know what you're doing. Like, you know exactly what you're doing. We know what you're doing. And so when we open our mouth and they so, say something about it, don't, don't get, don't get big eyed on me. Cause that's just going to piss me off even more. Oh, stuff like that makes me so mad. It's going to be a sturdy <laughs> no for me. A sturdy no hell for no. me. Sturdy hell to the no. Uh-huh. Next up on the trash list. So I guess we're going to have to go throw it in there because we've covered the other side of it. Allegedly. Thicky Minaj and Cardi B have somewhat settled their... I, yes. Uh, I said, I said, I'm clapping because I said when I saw them speaking on the red carpet, I hope that this was in, in, in the direction of a resolution, right? And not Woo-hoo. continuing to keep up the mess. But it's Cardi, I, I heard a clip of Cardi talking to Howard Stern about it. <laughs> yes, and I felt yes. like... You know, I was just very proud of Cardi. Like, I thought that she was quite mature about the whole situation and her saying that she refused to talk about it publicly until she got t- talked to Nikki about it because it was just like, you know, we're not going to keep up this mess. Uh, right. And that hood girl came out, too, because she was like, I mean, you know, I wasn't going to speak about it publicly, but I knew we was going to see each other. That's it. <laughs> like, That's it. I know I'm going to see you. And so we're going to talk about it when I see you. And don't try to run from me either. So... I was very, very proud of Cardi as well and the way that she handled it. Um, and even though I've got my own issues, I am glad that as two women uh, public in the public eye and in the industry that they were able to settle whatever differences Agreed. they had. Um, so Auntie Maxine has reclaimed Ooh, her time once again. Gave us another, <laughs> it felt like, you know, the people had started to forget about the initial reclaiming my time moment. And I feel like, you know, opportunity presented itself and Auntie Maxine again had to get these white men in line. I was present. I was present for the whole thing. It was so timely. It it just really rejuvenated me and gave me a little bit of energy to get through the rest of my week when I saw her, when I saw her just refuse to take like, to just take any BS. Like, she just was like, no, absolutely not. I will not yield. No, I will not yield. I will not, not yield. One second. I will not, I will not yield. yield. One second. <laughs> and I feel like somebody needs to make a I will not yield shirt. I, I will not yield. One second. And maybe we'll have maybe some we will. But um, <laughs> that, and I also love my favorite part was when she got the chairman together in terms of like, you know, calling him out on. You didn't interrupt him, so you're not going to interrupt me, and I will finish <laughs> what I was saying. I was like, get the people told, Maxine. She's like, you all are going to have some I, level of respect, respect now. respect my auntie, Maxine, because what we will not have is these sh- these kinds of shenanigans. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
And then she she went on and she I I am more offended <laughs> as an African American woman that's than you so, will ever so be. True. But I mean, it's such a common narrative, and I'm just so glad it was addressed in such a public public way because people want to kind of glaze over uh, the legacy of oppression and racism Mm -hmm. and uh prejudice in this country you glaze over it like we don't want to talk about it anymore you don't want to talk about it anymore you don't want you don't get to decide (laughs) whether or not i can talk about it we don't like what like i just no 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 we can stop talking about it when we stop experiencing the residuals of it absolutely that's when we're gonna stop talking about it but until then we will not and i feel like i feel like (laughs) what really just blows my mind is that people don't even realize how privileged, like what kind of, like how much privilege is in a statement. Like we're not going to talk about discrimination anymore. Like we're not going to talk about that anymore. Even though I've never been discriminated against. I am saying that the conversation is over. You don't even realize what kind of power and privilege you are exercising in making a statement like that. Um, Yep. And talking about making our country like, come on, come on, come on. We can, I mean, we can stay here for a long time. We just wanted to we really can. I guess the point is we had to acknowledge Auntie Maxine's c- keeping her foot on these, on these necks out here in, in Capitol Hill. I fully endorse it. I fully, fully, fully endorse her and I stand behind her and I pay her all the respect that she is not getting. But I appreciate the fact that she is setting an example of what we do not have to tolerate and how we can speak up and they will have to listen to us eventually. So you're right. And then the last thing is, I don't know if you saw, but I feel like Jada Pinkett Smith has been listening to Getting Grown. Has she? Because she now has hey, a series called The Red Table Talk. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it is it is three generations, herself, Willow, and her mother. That's awesome. Through, I think it's through Facebook Live, Facebook Watch. And so they discuss uh, uh, various topics at the Red Table from the three different generations' standpoints. And That's one of up. the episodes, actually, she had a sit down with um, Sheree. Which is I Will's did see ex-wife. some. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. I did see some. Um, I feel like I saw some clips from that, and I've been saying that I'm going to go on Facebook and watch the whole conversation. Same. I'm going to watch the whole thing, but I have seen some clips as well. So, um, shout out to Auntie Jada for you know still being out here, still working, still doing her thing, and always doing it with such grace. Um, and yeah, if you are listening to Getting Grown, you know, just go ahead and give us our little shout out. You know what I'm we saying? We would love that. We've, we've been fans for quite some time. We have. You know, Red Table Talk is great. If you want to merge it and do a Red Table Kitchen Table Talk. <laughs> we can do a Red Kitchen Table Talk. You know, we talk. can. We absolutely can. So, you know, just holler at us. Holler at your girls. Uh, and that's it for the trash this week. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm so glad that we didn't talk about uh, R. Kelly's career going up in flames. No, we can just watch that. We can be just like that little white girl in the meme. With <laughs> did she have an ice cream cone? I can't remember. And the house is burning in the background. We can be uh, just like that, just smiling and just watching it burn quietly. Oh yes. We don't even have to bring any attention to his raggedy, filthy ass. On to the graduation announcements. Let us go. My sister's popping right now, like it's time for the graduation shoutouts. Oh. Time for the pomp and circumstance. <laughs> pomp and circumstance. Pomp and circumstance. Oh, oh. Hey, pass me a turkey leg. <laughs> I have to say uh, that this weekend, Mother's Day weekend in the DMV is the weekend that every person graduates. <laughs> and the yeah. DC traffic is just beyond ridiculous. Um, but yeah, Howard, UDC, American University, uh, I think Georgetown and GW as well, but all of the area colleges and universities in the district and beyond all their graduations fall on this weekend. So shout out to all the graduates in the DMV. Shout out to yeah. all y'all. Every uh, last one. Every last one of you. I'm going to let all of you have all the restaurants. I'm not even going to bother myself with trying to eat out this weekend because I know that your moms and aunties, mm-hmm. everyone is mm-hmm. just Everybody, everybody is just going to be on U Street, but we're all going to have a good time. So we're moving on into the graduation an- announcements. 
We're really super excited. The first one comes from Dylan Fleming. Dylan says, hey, ladies, I promise to keep it short. Shout out to you, Dylan. Uh, yes. Dylan would like to shout out. Uh, I don't know if Dylan is a man or a woman, but himself, herself, because I mean, it could go both ways. It could be, yes. <laughs> but yeah, Dylan says, uh, Dylan will be graduating from the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. on Mother's Day weekend. Yes, May 12th, with a okay. master's in fine arts and acting. The only African-American graduating from an acting program this year. Yes! Come on. We still out here breaking records and setting trends and making history. So shout out to you. And um, yeah, you did that. Shout out to you, Dylan. Shout out to you. That's history for you. That oh, is also, uh, Dylan also wants us to know that there, there are upcoming performances. The Crucible by Arthur oh, Miller. Yeah. Honey, mm-hmm. plug yourself. The Crucible by Arthur Miller in the Olney Theater Center. That's happening April 18th through May 20th. A Midsummer Night's Dream <gasps> is going to be uh, at Prince George's Shakespeare in the Park, directed by Chris, Chris, Chris Dwyer. I can read, I promise. And that's going to be happening July 9th through July 23rd. So everybody go. If you live in the DMV area, check Dylan out. See what this MFA in acting, you know, is is got got. I mean, he's out here popping. She's out here popping. I hope that I'm not misgendering you. They're <laughs> out here popping. They are out here popping. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god, <laughs> Dylan! I was in a Midsummer's Night Dream in high school, in junior high school, high school. Good times. Good times. I was Queen Hippolyta. <laughs> I'm so proud. So proud. We love it. Let's move on. Congratulations, Dylan. Hello, ladies. My cousin, Taylor Thibodeau, will be graduating from Lamar University. Her degree is a Bachelor's of Science in Biology with a Chemistry minor. She's worked so hard for this degree and hopes to see an MD behind her name one day. I would also like to keep I would also like you to keep her in her in your prayers. She wasn't admitted to any colleges to continue her education, but she will succeed. Yes, she will. Thank you so much. Thank you for writing in Brianna and congratulations, Taylor. We are going to keep you in our prayers and we know that it's everything's going it's going to work out the way that it should. Awesome. Congratulations. The next uh shout out comes from Abigail Akinyemi. Uh she'd like to submit a graduation sh- uh, announcement for herself cuz she will be graduating with a BBA in accounting from Drury University on May the 12th. Um again, Mother's Day weekend also have obtained a full-time job and will be starting this June. So grateful to God and her supportive family for keeping her through this time. Also, want to thank Marvin Sapp, the Clark sisters, <laughs> Donald Lawrence, and Yolanda Adams for providing yes. me with the gospel songs that kept me during the midnight <laughs> hour while she studied for her exams. I know that's right. Uh, Abigail has listened to the podcast since day one. Thank you so much, Abigail. Uh, we really appreciate you for the shout out and the encouragement. Congratulations to you on completing your degree and landing your first full-time job, sis. I'm proud of you. Hey! Congratulations to you, Abigail. Praise the Lord, niggas. Yes, thank this you. is from Janae. Janae has been studying for graphic design and web communications and was blessed to find her true calling at some point. So she's super passionate about what she does. She loves what she does. Um, but she's grateful and proud to say that she graduated from the University of Alabama in Huntsville on May 6th. Awesome. So she has graduated already. It's been a long, tumultuous journey. But she says she did it, and our podcast helped to get her through. Her art and graphic design Insta is at peace love underscore media. If anybody is hiring for a graphic designer out there, thanks again for all you do, Janae. That's right. Y- y'all better come on. Y'all better be smart with this network. She says, P.S. I'd like to also shout out my two friends who graduated with me. My friend Destiny, who graduated with a master's, and Constance, who graduated with a bachelor's. Thanks again for all you Awesome do. stuff. Congratulations, Janae and Destiny and Constance. Love y'all. Um, the next email comes from Adrian. Adrian says in her Killmonger voice, hey, Auntie <laughs> Jade and Auntie Keith. <laughs> uh, she debated sending this uh, because, uh, as some family members said, it's just a vocational degree, but ain't no such thing as a just or nothing. I ain't no ain't just. No. Um, so, uh, Adrian, despite breast cancer and lupus, graduated from the Michigan College of Beauty in January of 2018 and is now hustling as a nail tech and esthetician full time to, yes. uh, to afford her class exams for going community college and saving on financial aid. Um, so she hopes to graduate, uh, Again, with her uh, degrees in music production, music and film production, she's working on doing that by the winter of 2020. 
Um, and she just wanted to say to all other medically disabled and handicapped college students, if you don't do it for nobody else, do it for that young kid with your disease, constantly being told by doctors and society that their life is over. It ain't over until God says it's over with love, Adrian. Word. Um, shout out to you, Adrian. Many congratulations on accomplishing your goals despite your health conditions. Um, you're an example of faith and perseverance to all of us. Shout out to you. Shout out to you, Destiny. Our next one comes from Koi, one of my favorite names. Praise the Lord, Jade and Kia. Um, Koi is actually, she, she, she had kind of a rough time the fall in the fall of 2017. She's a full-time attorney. She was a full-time grad student and served as a board member for two organizations. On top of that, she was mm. going through a divorce but she said, God and her mother got her through, but she's pleased to say yes. by his grace alone, she said, because my work ethic was truly trash sometimes, but I'm proud to be graduating with high it. honors on May 20th, my 29th birthday with a master of science degree in government contracts from George Washington University. Thank you again. Love y'all. Keep up the great work. Love Congratulations, that. Koi. Love that. Yes. And keep your head up. You are getting through and you are <laughs> shining, 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 shining. Uh, The ah. next email comes from um, Teambrea. Teambrea. Teambrea? Sorry, sis. Teambrea. Uh, she says, hey, cousins. First, I want to say thank you to you to the both of you. Your wisdom and guidance has helped me through so many trials and tribulations and taxes. I know that's right. I want to shout out myself. I have been working on my bachelor's in marketing for the past six years. I finally made it. On May 4th, I graduated from the great Jacksonville State University. Nigga, we made it. Hashtag team typing fast. And she included a picture of her and her friends hey. um, with her uh, graduation cap, which reads, uh, I worked hard so my dog can have a better life. With a picture of her dog on it. So shout out to you, <laughs> uh, sis, and for completing your degree. Uh, that's what's up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the next mm -hmm. one comes from Macy. I believe it's Macy. She says she wants to shout out her siblings, her youngest brother, right Miles, on. who will be graduating from the eighth grade and moving on to high school. She said time flies. And secondly, a huge shout out to her sister, Mercedes. She's worked full time overnight um, while taking a full course load. She said, I don't know how she does it, but she gets off work at 7 a.m., sleeps for a couple of hours and heads to class from 1030 to 2, wow. Monday through Thursday, and then works in the evening. She'll be graduating on May 18th with her bachelor's in criminal justice. She's currently applying for the police academy in hopes of eventually becoming a detective. She's so proud of her, and I just want her to know. Super shout out. Absolutely. So shout out to Mercedes Absolutely. and shout out to Miles. As you are, continue on your journey of education, you have a while to yes, go, but indeed. you are already uh, doing it. The next email comes from Dorian. Dorian says, greetings, sisters, first and foremost, giving honor to God, who is the head of my raggedy ass life. I just want to thank him and give him due praise and adoration <laughs> just for being merciful and just uh, and just for being God. Shout out to my damn self for successfully completing a master's of music degree at the University of Oklahoma in Norma, Oklahoma. Saturday, May the 12th hey. at a strong 9.30 a.m. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Dorian is an <laughs> operatic bass baritone, meaning that after hollering in church, I spent eight years learning to holler with the orchestra. A brief public service announcement. There is a whole fellowship of Black and African-American classical musicians. Go and support us in recital and on stage. I had to uh, hashtag Wakanda Forever by myself after... Lucia D. Oh, oh, that's probably the name. Mm -hmm. Lama Moore. I'm sorry. Lama um, but yeah, thank you, ladies. Hashtag <laughs> team anything but typing. Hashtag I'm not going to study war no more. Hashtag McNair. <laughs> thank you, Dorian. Uh, we appreciate you and we recognize yes, all of the Dorian. hard work that you've been doing. Shout out to you and your comrades in classical music uh, for uh, just being out here and representing us because representation matters everywhere so shout out to you with this popping skin listen out here Dorian hairline skin. flourishing what skin flourishing just out curls popping listen just being <laughs> just being brilliant just and being brilliant just being brilliant and black and beautiful absolutely our next one comes from Deanna hey Auntie Jade and Kia I'm new to the podcast and can't stop binge listening 
You guys make my entire day go by so fast and you set my mood every morning. Thank you, girl. Shout out to my beautiful baby cousin, Jasmine Trené Herring. She's graduating from East Ascension High School in Gonzales, Louisiana, this Friday, May 11th. And she's so proud of her. She's a beautiful, hardworking, melanin popping queen. And she's worked her butt off to push through high school. We love you so much, Jazz, and I can't wait to see you achieve all the dreams you can dream. Um, <laughs> so shout out to you, Deanna, and shout out to you, Jasmine. Congratulations as you continue your journey of education as well. Right on, right on. Moving right along to our next uh, announcement that comes from Portia Patterson. Hi, Jay and Keita. I'm a little late with uh, which is somewhat fitting because my younger sister has finally graduated from Tennessee State University on Saturday, May 5th, after five long off and on years. Um, please congratulate Kanisha Deshay Patterson, who graduated with the BS in Communications and is pursuing work as a website designer and programming. We had a fantastic time celebrating her big day on the day of, and I can think of no better way to show my older sister pride in her than by having her achievements announced across the world I'd appreciate if you can honor her my honor my request and look forward to listening to your next episode. Thank you, Portia, for listening and for supporting. And of course, we absolutely uh, shout out and send our congratulations to Kanisha uh, as well. Congratulations, Kanisha. Mm-hmm. Our last one. Um, hello, Jaden Kia. My name is Danielle Boone, and I like to scream from the mountaintops. A graduation shout out to the love of my life, my inspiration, my motivation, Miss April Kimball. April's graduating with her master's in early childhood education from George Mason University. This is more than just a momentous occasion for April as she prophesied that she would move to Washington, D.C. and get her master's degree. And she did just that. April stepped out on faith, uprooted her life in Atlanta, moved to D.C. and started grad school. The long nights, extra long papers and presentations have paid off. And I pray that God may continue to do good work in her life and she will remain faithful in the Lord as he guides her on her next journey. Congratulations, April. I love you. Kind regards, Danielle. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Congratulations, congratulations, April. And thank you so much for writing in, Danielle. And that wraps up our graduation announcements this episode. That's concluding. Continue to send them in. We'll be doing this clear through to the June. So uh, we look forward to hearing from you. If we haven't already, again, shout out to our graduates and let's move on to the kitchen table. Are you ready to make waves this season? Head right on over to today's sponsor, Mod Cloth, for aquatic prints, rainbow brights, and fun in the sun swimwear. Pair your favorite statement pieces with everyday denim or a polished skirt. It's totally wearable and totally you. Mod Cloth's signature label is designed by women for women and come in a full size range from extra, extra small to 4X. Got a question about a certain garment? The Mod Stylist team can hook you up with a complimentary sizing and styling help. P.S. It's officially wedding season and you'll find everything you need in the Mod Cloth Bridal Boutique. So I've been shopping at Mod Cloth for years and years and years. I've got a concert coming up with Sean Tillery and Changes, our anniversary concert. We have to wear vintage inspired pieces. And I've already been perusing my cloth because I plan on using our promo code to get 15% off the purchase of $100 or more. So in order for you to get that, all you got to do is go to M-O-D-C-L-O-T-H dot com and enter the code GROWN at checkout. Hurry up, though. The offer expires on August the 4th, 2018. So don't wait. That's modcloth.com. Enter the code GROWN for 15% off your purchase of $100 or more. All right, boys and girls, uh, men and women, cats and dogs, pens and pencils. (laughs) We're back again at the kitchen table to uh, finish our conversation of Tyari Jones and American Marriage. Shout out to everyone who sent in comments and tweets. Uh, It seems like we all read or and or listened to uh, an American marriage and we all are pretty Mm -hmm. shook (laughs) Um, at such a complex and compelling story. Um, of love and loss. Um, so yeah, we're going to continue the conversation today because there's a few more themes um, within the book that we wanted to tackle. And I have a couple of questions. I guess I'll just jump in and see if that will jump the com- um, jump the conversation, um, jump start the conversation. <laughs> jump I can talk start. sometimes. So uh, yeah, this was a question that I came across. 
uh, online because, you know, there's a few people who have uh, put together a list of discussion questions around the book. Um, and I, and in, in addition to us asking our own questions, I, I thought this would, um, you know, add to our Absolutely. discussion. So the race of Roy's accuser mm. is never revealed in the story. It's not. See, I, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. So I guess that leads to the question. Did you assign her one? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and OK, so what did you think that the woman was? White. OK, um, so let me ask you this. If she wasn't white. Does that change? Does that change, uh, you know, your perception of what happened to Roy? No, because, well, no. like, do you think that, do you think that it was a, I guess, I'm from what I'm trying to get at is I wonder what prompted Tayari, like if it was an intentional thing, I, I imagine that it would be, but, you know, to kind of leave that mm. sort of detail to our imaginations, because I would imagine that all of us kind of concluded one way or another, that the accuser was a white woman. <laughs> I yeah. just, it just seemed like right to me. Because the thing um, is, even when, <laughs> even in the very, because th this was the woman that he helped, right? This was the one. Right. And he, right. So even when he, even when he helped her and like, you know, said her and warned her and all of that, the whole time I, the whole time I'm thinking to myself, sorry, y'all, this is just, it's just reality. I was like, don't be in that room by yourself with that I, white woman. You're, you're not by yourself. <laughs> I was just like, what, what man would go into, like, I just felt like, I just thought it was a complete setup. I mean, I just immediately thought of, like, under no circumstances would I have, I just, I was blown away, I should say. I yeah. was blown away that he entered the room. I was blown away. Either regardless of the woman being black, white, and I just, um, a stranger man in, entering the room of a woman, nice. I just was totally blown away by that. Maybe that is me being a New Yorker. Maybe that's me watching a whole hell of a lot of Special Victims Unit. I was blown <laughs> away. I was, that was like, what? Yes. I remember like sitting up in the bed, like reading the book, like, I know this nigga not finna go. That nigga went in the room and was like Why? touching stuff. Like when he was, I mean, I was talking he was out loud. The, uh, he like fixed the toilet. I'm like fingerprints yes. all over the place, all over the place. <laughs> what the hell? Like I, re like, I remember like reading this part of the book and being like, what in the world is wrong with this man? Same, same. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm not, because I was literally talking out loud. I was like, why are you in there <laughs> with that white woman by yourself? Yeah, <laughs> totally craziness, total craziness, total craziness. <laughs> but it doesn't really change. I mean... I guess it does. It, it changes the conversation about race mm -hmm. if it was to be. And so you're right. It probably was very intentional that she left out the race of the accuser. But yeah, I definitely assumed she was a white woman. Yeah. And I thought I, I gave some thought because the question was like, what difference does the race of this woman make in the way you understand the novel storyline? Um, and I mean, I guess it shouldn't make a difference, but... No, because the ultimate conversation is still about how their the mass incarceration, um, wrongful arrests, wrong, you know, the black people and people of color, brown people um, are not getting tried fairly. You know, there's a huge problem with the justice system being lazy and essentially wanting to just make us guilty. And so they'll off throw these plea deals at us. So like it does, it's still, it's still that conversation. Absolutely. Um, and I guess another thing I was going to say is that I guess I just, another thing that might've contributed to my assumption that Roy's accuser was a white woman is that I just would not want to believe that a black woman would, would do a black man like that. Right. But that's I would not. But it's, I, I. But I, I guess it's it's not what you know. what I'm saying it's not a uh, far fetch. Right. Like it's it it it's happened. You know what I'm saying. And so that's a that's another conversation. <laughs> it is. It totally is. It totally is. Uh, but yeah, that was one um, point. So another another point that I kind of wanted to get into because I felt like we talked around this uh, last week, but I wanted to bring it back up when we were talking about how like motivations for relationship motivations for marriage 
and how a lot of the conversations between Celestial and Roy would lead you to believe that they may or may not have uh, had similar conceptions or conceptualizations of what it meant to be, what it meant to be in a marriage. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm thinking along the lines, like, did marriage mean the same thing? Do you believe that marriage meant the same thing for Roy that it did for Celestial? Like, did they, did they get together for the same or similar reasons? Do you think they were meant for each other? Like when you read the story, it was like, did you get, did you get like these, no. this is a love story, right? No, it is a love story in the sense where you, th there's got to be some sort of love there in order for you to put forth that, that type of time to wait, wait on somebody. You know what I'm saying? But was it love for the other person? No, I think it was more like obligation, like. This I don't want this to look this way, and that, and I still stand by what I said last week, where I said there was a disconnect with Celestial the entire time for me, and like just that sense of obligation. Uh, she'd always had the, you know, her, she had her example of her parents or whatever in front of her, and she came from a different background than Roy. With Roy, I felt like he loved her, but Roy, like I said, Roy was a fuck nigga, like in the beginning, like yes, yes. Not even in the beginning, like he just threw was out. A threw out. Was I was felt so like I felt <laughs> like both of them were were more infatuated with the image of yeah. marriage than the actual marriage or each other or like the, the people within the marriage. Um, so I did feel more of a love from him, and I know that, but that doesn't excuse his because I the very first thing that popped in my head with him was the uh, episode of Martin where he took his ring off to see if he still got it. Mm -hmm. Roy was always doing some take his ring off to see if he still got it type shit. And the sh then the shit he pulled was like unacceptable. Like getting people's numbers and, and, and you telling me like, I just got her number. Like I just got it. I wasn't going to call her. That means absolutely nothing to me. Because at that point, you put forth the action of getting somebody's phone number. Like, what are you doing? I mean, that's what I'm saying. And that's why I feel like that that pressure, like, I feel like is is real. So I feel there's a pressure on young people, especially mm -hmm. young, um, uh, educated, enterprising, employed, upwardly mobile people. There's pressure from okay. parents. There's pressure from society. There's pressure from peers and kind of like standards and expectations around having this image of, you know, marriage just seem like the next logical step. Not necessarily that they, either of them, I don't get the sense that either of them wanted to be married to each other. I felt like Roy was chasing, me and Bobby talked about this. Um, so shout out to Bobby. I felt like Roy was, infatuated with this whole because maybe how he introduces himself in the beginning of the book is like coming from this podunk town being completely infatuated with being in like the metropolitan city of atlanta the, yeah. and kind of having all of the status and you know the status markers of like mm -hmm. being that that kind of black right like mm -hmm. middle class fulfilling that um i don't know generalization stereotype i don't know however you want to classify it um and i felt like him having a beautiful wife on his arm was a part of that image absolutely and on that, and, and that makes perfect yeah sense. totally and i felt like it was just maybe i think a lot of a lot of to pull in um to make it personal i have definitely felt that pressure um and i feel like a lot of millennials um and you know people in their 20s and 30s 20s and 30s feel that you know the expectation like you know even going back to what Tracy Ellis Ross was saying in that speech she did for Glamour magazine about how when even after all the things that she's accomplished when people you know when she says that she's single people like oh like they like you know mm -hmm. dismiss all of all of who she is as a single right. person um and there's like a negative stigma associated with, with her singleness. Um, and they make right. it almost as if it's like not, a, it couldn't possibly be a function of her choice, but it's a function of her. Right. Like what's wrong with her? Right. Like you've got all these right. things, but nobody's paying attention. Right. To that. So I felt like, um, I feel, I think that that, that kind of came through for me 
in the book. And I was wondering if it, if that was uh, something that others picked up on. So let us know. Cause I think on the flip side of Roy's situation, I feel like Celestial having come from that middle-class background, there might've been a bit mm-hmm. of infatuation with her uh, around Roy. Cause Absolutely. she didn't paint Roy no mind until he got in the fight outside the right. club. Uh, and, and right. Secondly, I, no mind, no mind, <laughs> zero mind. She was uninterested. And she said that several times, but, um, mm-hmm. Also, I felt like, and you let me know what you think. I felt like Celestial thought that marriage, her marriage to Roy was her making amends for what happened to her as when she was in college. So like the whole, remember, remember what happened to her in terms of yep. um, getting involved with the, with the, with that man and getting pregnant with the professor. Mm-hmm. and all the devastation. So I felt like that was a time the that she wasn't proud of. And I thought that maybe her kind of having this neat and tidy life with her husband um, mm-hmm. kind of, you know, made her feel better about about that situation and kind of make amends for it. But I, I never believed from the beginning that Roy, I mean, that Celestia wanted to be married and that she wanted to be married mm-hmm. to Roy. Like, so, so I felt more of that. So with Roy, I, I did feel what you were saying as far as him having the pretty wife on his arm and it fit like the idea of the, of the life that he thought he should have. But I also still felt somewhat like a little bit more of a love from him than I did from her. Even in all his fuck nigga actions, he, the way that he spoke True. about her, the way that he spoke he was attracted about to her how the he viewed mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. Right. And the way, even the way when he like the little, the little, not necessarily a tiff, but like the you know, what his mother felt, what Olive felt towards Celestial, like he talked about them being the two most important women and he didn't kind of blow it off. And I felt like sometimes Roy was, yes, being a fuck nigga, but I felt like he was just basically being greedy. Like he just wanted to have his cake and eat it too, but he still loved her, which is bullshit because you don't do things like that to somebody that you love. But I still felt like that there was more of a love from him than there was from her. There was more of a coldness from her and more of an obligation so um so what do you want to talk about now do you want to talk about parents you want to talk about andre surprise me (laughs) (laughs) okay so the role of parents Mm -hmm. in parental relationships do you feel like given since you are you know married partnered all of that i guess you know through the lens of your own lived experience do you feel like either had like healthy parent dynamics. No, they both had somewhat dysfunctional dis dynamics. Like the ways that their parents interacted or or involved themselves or engaged within Roy and Celestial's relationship. No, they each had their own batch of issues. Um neither one of them were in like the ideal, even though Celestial's was painted to be the ideal. Neither one, all, both of them had their own baggage that they carried. Why? Because she had money? Yeah. That's fascinating. <laughs> right. Because rich people got problems too, clearly. Rich people got problems. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm like, no, they both came with their own baggage. Because mm-hmm. the thing about it is my problems are not your problems and your problems are not mine, but we both got them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about it is also, it's uh, you know, it's the whole grass is greener situation where you think someone got it better than you do. But sometimes... The family that doesn't have the money or, you know, and doesn't have all of that going on is the family that has the most peace. So maybe their batch of issues is like finances or whatever. Not necessarily saying that's what Roy's was because we know his was other things. But they both, they, I, I say all that to say that they both had their own issues with how they were raised and their parents' dynamics and their family dynamics. And I think that played a part. And then with them being so different, that also added an extra layer of difficulty in how they communicated with one another. Mm-hmm. 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 What about you? So I agree. Um, I think that it was almost like two sides of the same coin. Roy, Roy's relationship with his mom, right? Mm-hmm. I had, I think I felt <laughs> ways about it throughout the book. There were times where I was really like, oh, yes. this is familiar and this is great. I totally remember you know, mm-hmm. this. And then there were times where I was just like, sis, you're doing a lot. <laughs> like, um, she reminded me of um, Jennifer Lewis on Blackish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> she gave me all Absolutely. of Ruby. <laughs> she, because she gave Celestial hell. What? <laughs> like, like, from the beginning. That damn doll situation. Oh, I was God. like, lady, sit down somewhere. Stop it. Why are you why are you putting this pressure on this girl like that? And she was being petty. And I felt like what? I felt like she knew. I was like, because she knew she made Celestia uncomfortable. And she was just doing yeah. it on purpose. Um, that's what made me be like. And then she kept it going. She was like, Oh, don't let me take away something from the man. Uh, little old me. Girl, I'm like, shut You wearing me down. Up. You're wearing me down. You are wearing me. Where I felt like uh, Celestial's mom should have been more involved. Roy's mom was too involved. Mm-hmm. And when I say should have been more involved, I mean Celestial's mom should have checked her. <laughs> like, should have checked her so and called times. her out on things um, so many times. So that's why I was saying where, you know, it was like two sides of the same coin. There was no balance. There was no balance in this book at all. I felt like I wanted one mm-hmm. character to be level-headed and have some sense. Um, I think we nope. get close. With Celestial's aunt, we get close. We get really close. Um, but I still feel like she wasn't she wasn't in it enough. I feel like I wanted her to nope. be involved in the story. Um, I felt like the book needed that balance, that kind of like level-headed, practical, this is what you do. Because everyone was so operating from such an emotional place. Everybody. Everybody, everybody. Every single character, with the exception of the tree in the backyard. <laughs> it was just wearing me out. It was really where it was very taxing on the reader. But yeah, I just wonder. And okay, so given okay, so let's talk about Roy's two dads. Um, okay, because I thought they balanced each other out to me. Mm, let me think about that. A yeah, bit more. But yes, yeah, so I felt like they kind of gave. They each brought different perspectives, but both perspectives were useful. Mm-hmm. Um, although I thought that the whole situation, the whole way that Roy's biological dad identified himself or presented himself or linked himself to Roy was real sus to me. Like, it was very suspect. Uh, I was like, I, I don't like that. The same thing. And then, then I was like, I was like, am I just being, mm-hmm. am I just being skeptical because mm-hmm. this nigga's in prison? Like <laughs> that, I was like, no, nah, but this just is I not a, sitting I right feel in my way shutdown. about parents who leave. Like you, when you, if you leave when a child is a child, you cannot come back when a child mm-hmm. is an adult, thinking that you can have the same authority and privilege to kind of move within the relationship as you did when the child was a child. So, like Roy's father left when Roy was just a little boy yes. and then I felt like the way that he um, mm-hmm. came back into yeah, the way he resurfaced into Roy's resurfaced. life did not give Roy any space to make any decisions for himself and that bothered me uh, because one of the things that I can say that I, mm-hmm. I struggle with in kind of reconnecting with my own father is I know that you left. When you left, I was in the seventh grade, but now I'm grown. So you do not get to define the ways that we engage. Like, that's not up to you. That's not a decision that you make yourself. You have to allow me to figure out and make decisions on my own to determine for myself how I want this relationship to exist and what I want it to look like. And that's not Mm -hmm. to be disrespectful. I still acknowledge him as my father, but he does not get to come in to the, to the relationship and set, set the, set the terms or the parameters of how we going to interact. So that bothered me. Yeah. You left, you lost all of those privileges. No, you left to, and I still honor you as my dad and all of that, but you have to understand that parent child dynamics change as the child grows and develops into an adult. So I can still love and honor and respect you as my father without you feeling like you can just come on in here and tell me how to live my life. Because Mm -hmm. to be honest, you don't know me or my life. So I felt (laughs) exactly. So I felt the way way that he he bogarted his way into Roy's space like that. That didn't sit well with me. Um, But still, Mm -hmm. that aside. I felt like once they were able to connect and, you know, figure out how they were going to exist and support each other 
in the in the situation they were in, I did feel like he did have some useful perspective for mm-hmm. for Roy, who had kind of been socialized and into this naive kind of false sense of reality about how relationships work, how women work, how life works. So I feel like there was some reality checking that his 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 biological dad was able to do for him that his his uh, stepdad couldn't. His stepdad couldn't, and because I and Olive, Olive was. Uh, she was too involved. She was too she was involved. Too in it. She already like she already proved she was doing too much by calling that boy Little Roy for his whole adult <laughs> life, right? <laughs> Little Roy, like Little Roy. Anyway, yeah, yes. I think that's that's a that's all that's like a that's a real thing, right? So it is because it happens. So the labels, yeah, it happens to a lot of us, right? We're watching it right How now. Often on do we have crew. to? Keep- True. With Sky and her son. True. Like, it literally yeah. happens all of the time. And it's not saying that because there are situations where there are trash parents who literally just leave because they're selfish and because they are they have no regard for anybody but but themselves. Right. There are situations where you have people like Sky where they are not equipped to be able to take care of a child the way that they want mm-hmm. to. However, and so they have to try to give the child the best life. But in both circumstances and situations, the fact of the matter is you weren't there for a certain amount of time. And so there is a back seat that you have to take. You have to allow the child to express Mm -hmm. that hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because you can come back with the explanation 15 years later, but Mm -hmm. I got 15 years worth of feelings about your absence. Like, you know, and you have to you have to give space for that. And I felt like as sad as the situation was with Sky is with Sky and her son, Genesis. Mm -hmm. I got to a point where I felt like Sky was pushing. I agree. And I was just like, you have to let this boy work through this man. I'm sorry. He's a young man now. You have to let this young man work through all of that. And it might mean he don't want to fool with you. Like, it might mean that. Mm -hmm. Like, he, you asked him to come and meet with you. He did that. And he's not ready to have the conversation that you want to have. So, despite your good intentions, despite your reasoning or rationale for what you, why you did what you did, you can express that to him and he can hear it, but he is not obligated to receive it in the timing that you want, that you want you want the you know him to receive it so there's also a certain level of humility Mm -hmm. that you have to have and a certain level of self-control for your own emotions that you have to have in a situation like that because of the hurt the other person because the other person had no choices in the situation they were just put there so there's a space that in that same where you're like not no pushing you have to allow them to express those emotions the way that they're going to. And you need to hold back on how you express yours. Right. Because, and, and yeah, because in another thing, and this is no judgment to Sky because I feel like, no, we are I all, love Sky. yeah, we all have to figure it out. Right. And there's no manual or rights and wrongs about how to do this. But what I really would have wished for in watching the situation, and I don't know if it didn't exist because, you know, editing, we don't see the whole story, Right. but it's right. my prayer that someone was able to sit with Sky and help her process and understand that. Um, such that in the subsequent conversation, so the initial conversation that she had with her son, where he said what he had to say in terms of not wanting to fool with her, she continued to push. And the second time Caesar got them to come back together, her reaction was just like, Sky's making this about her. Like you're making it about you. Mm-hmm. And I understand that you hurt, mm-hmm. but you have to you have to give space. And and yes, you know what I'm saying, you can't be defensive. Right. And if you're not at a place mm-hmm. where you can receive all of my reaction, like there, are, you know, when I consider my own situation, there are levels and degrees to my father's, you know, the ways that my father's absence impacted my life. There's there's right. anger. There's hurt mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and disappointment. There is indifference, because mm-hmm. I think after a while you get to a certain space where you just like. I'm good either way because you got to learn how to cope, right? It's a coping mechanism. So I think you have to process all of those things um, and they come out and manifest in different ways in different times. So my, if I had 
like my prayer for Sky or my hope or just from my own experience is that if you are not ready to receive all of that, then you are not ready to reconnect. I know your heart is in the right place. I know you have good intentions and you want to get off your chest and let people know, you know, why you did what you did. You want to rebuild. And those are all well and good. But if you're not willing to let that boy sit there and say, F you, I don't want nothing to do with, do with it. And you just accept it. So you're not ready to reconnect because he got a right. You know, he has right. a right because he's right. never, you have, you can't just expect someone to never allow those things to come out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have a right to tell my father as many times as I need to that I think it was completely, completely unnecessary for him to leave the way he did. I think I think it was completely unnecessary. It's the same thing when somebody cheats, like when somebody is unfaithful in a relationship and the other person is healing and processing, you have to allow that person to heal and process as they will. And if they need to continue to talk about that, mm-hmm. that situation over and over again, you don't have any right to shut them down and tell them that you're tired of talking about it. Unfortunately, there are pe- there are victims in these situations and the vi- in these victims are the ones who are allowed to express themselves in the way that they need to. And you have to give them the space to do so. Yes. And not saying that you can not build and work to a place where the conversations about the hurt are productive. Of course, of course. So I'm not saying that You know, you just have to allow the person to be able to continue to rehash and bring up and bring up and bring up. Mm -hmm. But in the instance of Skye and her son, they had two conversations that we know of. And every time Genesis said how he felt, Skye made an excuse. Yep. Um, So I'm saying in those instances, you have to give people the space to get it out and say what's on their heart without any kind of qualification from you. Like, You cannot but this or but that. You have to sit there and say, I acknowledge that I hurt you. I acknowledge that you that you are upset with me. You don't want anything to do with me right now. You have absolutely every right to feel that way. And I think that that is what that that that, that, like you were saying, that kind of humility is absolutely required. And it it even points back to that even points back to. okay, this is a good segue to my next question, because we want to move from from this conversation to Andre, because I think. Uh, I, I see like a, a segue that that makes sense. <laughs> so, nice and, yes. So, in terms of in terms of this whole notion, the conversation that we've been having about like apologies and and that kind of, and forgiveness and just you know addressing division and relationships and trying to come back together and all that. Mm-hmm. Andre said he insisted in the book that he did not owe Roy an apology for the way his relationship with Celestial changed. My question is, do you agree? That he did not owe Roy an apology for essentially falling in love with and proposing to Roy's wife. You absolutely owe him an apology. What are you talking about? Why do you think he didn't feel like he needed to apologize to Roy? Because this was this was the part of the book that because he was light skinned and arrogant. Me. And this is why. So when you at you know what to to re answer your question <laughs> from last week, Andre is the one who got on my nerves probably the most. The most. Celestial got on my nerves, but Andre, some about Andre just irritated the piss out of me. And you, how do you not feel like you don't owe this man an apology? Or how do you feel like you don't need to even speak to this man about how you moving forward? <laughs> like, and the thing about it is Andre knew Roy was innocent. Absolutely. He knew he was innocent. So you know he's innocent. And Andre was Roy's friend. He's the whole reason these two met. He's the whole. This is exactly. He's the whole reason. So exactly. how you don't feel like you don't want who introduced him in the first place. You are supposed to be this man's friend. You turned around. You said that he is innocent. You know that he is innocent. So you know that he's wrongfully incarcerated right now. What makes you think that you don't have a right to say, bruh, my bad. <laughs> like, I begged you. Or I just felt <laughs> like, like. For the deception alone. Right. Because what really got on my nerves throughout this whole book is I feel like if you're going to be big enough to do something, you ought to be big enough to say that this is what I'm doing. Like That's what Andre's daddy said. It. Exactly. Like, don't hide it. Like, don't hide it. And I would have had so much... I would have been able to respect Celestial. I would have been able to respect Andre. If at any point they would have 
communicated with Roy what was going on. Yep. So just on the deception alone, for the fact that you were doing this and still Celestia was still going to see Roy and acting oh, as yeah. if she was not going home to live to live with Andre. Like when they were staying in the same house. Oh God. <laughs> like Celestia will go to see Roy and then come home and get in the bed with Andre, with Andre. And never ever once thought like maybe I should tell you know I mean and continue and continue to write to Roy about Andre in this brotherly fashion. Right. And continue to yes that also would tell Roy or, or even when she tried to break away, even when she you could tell that she was feeling guilty about mm-hmm. it because, you know, at the closest she got to Andre, her letters changed in terms of like, you know, I can no longer be, you know, I can only support you in these kind of ways. The, the excuses started coming around why she couldn't go see him in this, that and the third. But I just felt like she should have just like I just wanted her to woman up, just woman up and say, this is what it is. This is what time it is. Instead of making excuses. I don't, yep. I can't support you in this way because of X, Y, Z. No, I can't support you in this way because Andre is dicking me down. Like, just say, it. right. call a thing a thing. Call a thing a like thing. We're, like, we're living. This is what I'm saying. Like, we go like, together now. Uh, it's not something that we plan to do. <laughs> it just kind of happened. But this lie is eating me up. Because it clearly was. I've been weak like, in the flesh. You know You've what been I'm saying? for a long ass time. Yeah, man, it happened. It went down. I'm really sorry. Like you had, you had to know it was going to come eventually. <laughs> listen, I mean, and then again, then you give Roy the choice to say, um, I'm still going, you know, we can still pursue this or whatever. I think that's what like the shock of it. Like, so, yeah, I'm just rambling now. But that leads to the conversation about cheating mm-hmm. and why you need to own up as adults when you are feeling a certain way in a relationship, if you have any intention whatsoever of wanting to stay with this person, people need to stop stepping out on this greed and they need to open. That's one thing me and my husband said. We said, listen, if we are feeling a certain way about one another to the point where we feel like we might step out, we're going to at least have the respect for the other person to let them know how we're feeling. There's no, like, don't not give me an option. This is all I ask. Don't not give me a choice all I about what I will and what I won't deal with. Absolutely. So when you lie to me, you give me no choice because I think that I'm in a situation Absolutely. that I'm not really in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and that's really, yeah, it's so simple. And I feel like so many people <laughs> miss that, but that is such a critical moment because I can think I'm sitting here recalling all the times when a man has looked me in my face and said, I didn't know how to tell you. Nigga, the so way I that lie. you are looking in my face right now telling this me you didn't I'm, know how to tell me. Like, what are you talking about I didn't about know right how now? to tell you. So this or that. So I, I didn't know how to tell you. How am I supposed to tell you that? Um, so, yeah, I just feel like that is so, so, so cheap. Because I feel like it's so cheap. It's just so cheap. And it really, really, really gets on my nerves. I feel like if you're big like enough. Made in China. Yeah, if you big enough, Taiwan. If you big enough to do. If you're big enough to do it, you got to be big enough to own it. That's just like, you can't be hiding stuff like that. Like you, you can't be hiding it. If you big enough, if you bad enough, you made a decision, stand up in it. You made a decision. And I just cannot stand when you got me out here looking stupid. There have been several times in my, in my life where I found out about something, you know, what, concerning my relationship outside of my relationship and then when I go back and confront the person the first thing they say is I didn't know how to tell you or I didn't want to tell you or I've been meaning to tell you but I just couldn't find a way to tell you just I think that's baloney because what you're saying is I wasn't man enough to handle your reaction that's all it is I, my That's balls really were not big enough for me to come out of my face. <laughs> you know and what tell I'm you saying? The truth about the bullshit I that I'm doing. I look you in your face and tell you that I'm a trash person. And I, I cannot tell you. You know what I'm saying? I could not own up to the fact that I made a mistake and deal with you the implications of that mistake as it related to you. And that's only when it's a mistake, because there's a whole nother conversation about when you get caught. Mm. <laughs> mm. But that we won't even get it. Like mm. you know. But yeah, that's, that's another. I think that that is real cheap behavior, and that's why I do not, I do not use Celestial. I think she's worthless. 
like I think that she has a lot of growing Sweet. a lot of like there was a problematic there's like she's just there were so many problematic things about her and her character the way that she moved um she's spoiled. and I hated it I really hated it I just couldn't respect it because I feel like you cannot I I I have so much respect for people who are trash and they stand up in it that's it tell me Tell me, I can handle it. I can be upset. You know what I'm saying? Because I can be upset. I get to be upset. If you get to be trash, I get to be upset about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just tell me. Just and tell I never, me. I never could be happy for Celestial. Like even when she was writing Roy talking about she her she was opening a storefront and her pops bought this for her. This I just rolled my <laughs> eyes. I was like more spoiled as entitled behavior, behavior this, right? No entitled. She don't want for nothing, including niggas. Like she don't want for anything. <laughs> you know what title. I'm saying? One goes to prison. She got to want another one right mm-hmm. there. So I don't know. Whew. Well, I think that we have, um, I think the takeaway from an American marriage is that it's an awesome book. There are a lot of layers. Yes. Um, and I think what I loved about it so much, I was me and Bobby were talking about this is that it really showed me the ways in the times. And I think that's why I found Celestial, like she got on my nerves so much is because I could see, see, see times in my life where I, um, behaved like her, not in the sense of like being entitled or spoiled or whatever, but that whole naivety and just that whole, uh, lack of intention and just being real reactionary and going with the flow and not making a decision, but just kind of like letting things come as, as they come. I have been guilty of that. Mm -hmm. And, I just, I just think that that's not how you exist within a relationship. Like, that's not what love is all about. Yeah, not that's not what love one. is. That's not what no. a relationship is. And I'm grateful that I have had the opportunity to learn those lessons. This book showed me and gave me, um, it gave me like, it contextualized that for me. Like, you know, because I could see it in my own experience, but reading about it was just like, dang, was I out here being that dumb? Like, and it made it real for me to the extent that I know <laughs> that I'm going to move and operate differently in my relationships going forward. Um, and that's what good books do, right? Even fiction, right? They're supposed to make you think about how you are, how you exist in the world, what kinds of things you um, want. You know what I'm saying? Like it made me, I, yeah, I've taken away, walking away from this book saying like, I'm not going to get married if I don't want to get married. And when I'm in relationship with someone and we're moving toward marriage, if that's what we think our intention is, we have to do the work before getting married of making sure that, you know, we have Absolutely. common shared understanding and shared language. We're on the same page about things because you cannot just be out here all willy nilly assuming that your partner is on the same page with you when you've not done that work to make sure that that's the case. I'm going to keep it real funky with y'all real quick. Like I did not, I didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't, it, we, we kind of did things a little bit backwards. And so, and I have an awesome marriage. That's the thing. I love my partner to death, but we have had to do work within our relationship while being in our relationship. And that is that. So when, you, if you have the opportunity right now to do certain work that you need to do for yourself ahead of time, I, by all means, advocate mm-hmm. for you to take advantage of that right now. And if you find yourself entering into a relationship, make that key, make that forefront, doing that work ahead of time as you all grow together because you want to enter that relationship and that marriage, which is already a, a job within itself and is always going to be, you want to enter that as healthy as possible. So I definitely, definitely advocate for all kinds of couples therapy and whatever people need to do to get just their lives together. Just conversation, right? Just asking questions. Doing a fucking question. It's just like, asking questions. Nigga, and answering them. Like, exactly. Like, <laughs> because really making was- sure that you know this person. Like, really making sure that you know them. And not saying mm-hmm. that, that you won't continue to learn about them as you as the relationship progress. Because I'm sure even getting married or entering a relationship, like, opens different layers and dimensions of who we are as people. So all, yep. so all, and a, lot, and a lot of that stuff. So to be fair, I don't know that all that came out about Roy and Celestial's relationship would have come out outside of the tragedy of his wrongful incarceration. 
I right. don't think it would have. I don't think it would have. Because no, it, 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 mm, that's okay. So sorry. <laughs> I know we we're about to wrap it up, but real quick, because we, we didn't address this one important thing. Because the thing is, remember when Roy told Celestial that that uh, Big Roy was not his real dad? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's like a big secret or whatever. And it makes Olive feel away, which anyway. Mm. But w- when he told her that, and the big deal that she made about how long he held on to that. But look how long she held on to the fact that she had a whole abortion and relationship. I wondered if he knew that. Did we talk? Did did, did he know? I don't know. I don't think he did. Mm-hmm. I That was my understanding. I could be wrong. You all feel free to correct me if I am. But I don't think that he knew that. I think that she disclosed that later when he was already locked up. And so you held on to something like that for so long. Yeah, because remember she wrote him and she was like, I'm going to tell you something and you're not going to like oh, it. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But I need you to stop saying this because, and then blah, 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 her whole experience. So you mad about this man holding on to, you know, his daddy situation and his daddy issues and his mommy issues and his his parent issues. But then you held on to a whole baby and all of that. like you. He was never gonna say that if it didn't, if if it wasn't, if it didn't come up, if it didn't need to be said. Mm, 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 mm. It's another reason she got on my goddamn nerves. <laughs> so yes, this is why we read books <laughs> at the kitchen table. Yeah, because I mean, I think it does kind of yes. color and bring out different conversations that need to be had, um, and and just kind of like perspective and awareness that we need, right? So for all all women, yes. single, partnered, married not married um there's work that has to be done like in in terms of working through our own stuff and coming to terms and confronting and dealing with our own issues and then if we say we're going to be in relationship with a person um there is a responsibility for us to kind of cultivate that same intentional openness and communication with with our partner uh, Cause that's really the only mm-hmm. way that you get to know somebody um, for real, for real. So we, we fall for the outside, like the superficial stuff. Um, and even like the, the soup, the surface level connections, you know, we like the same things we like to do. We have the same hobbies. We have similar interests. We can talk about the same things, but like when you start getting to the core of a person, um, the meat, right? The, the white the foundation meat of, of where they come of, from. Of a person and who they are. That's really when, you know, whether or not a relationship makes sense comes to bear, right? Like, that's essential. And even talking to my friends who got, who've gotten married within recent years, they're talking about how that opens up, you know what I'm saying? Like, like how that's like really just like oh. mind blowing in terms of, the kinds of things that you sis, let me tell you something. The dynamics of how oh people God. are raised, where they come from, all of that, they that all plays a huge mm-hmm. part in who you are as a person, right? So when you bring two people together who come from completely different backgrounds, foundations, family dynamics, all of that and you blend them together to create their own household, that is a challenge within itself. Not saying that it's not doable because we see many success, successful couples who've been able to do it for a long time. My parents have been married for 34 years. My grandparents were going to be married for 65 years before my grandfather passed away. My other grandparents have been married for 50 something years. You know what I'm saying? So it's doable. But when you bring those two different dynamics into a relationship, that creates a challenge that you guys have to figure out a way to work through. And it is not always easy. I mean, because you're going to have to continue to work through it, right? It's not like an outcome that you check off like, oh, yeah, no. we covered that. But nah, but like. Because there are things because there are things that come up in how you handle, like the way in which you handle finances, mm-hmm. the way in which you handle parenting, the way in which you handle discipline, the way in which you handle um, how you take care of your household, you know, the You've got you've got different situations with people's parents. You've got immigrant parents. You've got parents who are not immigrants. You've got sick parents. You've got parents who are in good health. You've got like there. You know you have parents who are not really great grandparents, and then you find out that until when you have kids, and then you've got you know. So there's so many different layers that come into building your own family. 
And it's really it's 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 really a lot of work that people don't want to put the effort and the time into. Agreed. So yes, guys, that's uh, an American marriage. We are um, gonna wrap up kitchen table talk, and uh, yeah. it, I, I I really enjoyed this <laughs> book. We will be thinking, considering um, what the book for what's next June. Yeah, June uh, will be. Um, so send your suggestions if you have them. We really hope that you guys have enjoyed the conversation. Enjoy kind of uh, working through this book with us. We're open to your suggestions as far as not only what books to read, but how we can continue to make the segment better. Um, as I'm really enjoying the book club. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys yeah. are too. Uh, so yeah, keep in touch with us. Y'all know how to reach us. And I guess we can move on to Honesty Box. Yes, let's move along. Okay. Support for today's show also comes from HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers your favorite step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. Choose from three plans, classic, veggie, or family. Each box is delivered right to your door in recyclable, insulated packaging and made up of fresh, reasonably obtained ingredients from carefully selected farms and high-rated trusted sources. Plus, with the simple recipes outlined on pictured step-by-step instruction cards, you can feel confident in your cooking. There are even lots of one-pot recipes that require minimal cleanup, and we love an easy cleanup. That way you can spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping each week and get that time back to do more of what you love. I love HelloFresh. It helps me save time with my family. I'm able to cook something quick in the evening so I can spend a lot more time with Noah. We're able to sit down, watch a little show before it's time for her to go to bed. I can't wait to see some of the upcoming recipes that they have. So for $30 off your first week of HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com forward slash grown30 and enter the code G-R-O-W-N-3-0. That's HelloFresh.com forward slash grown30. Offer code GROWN30 for $30 off your first week of HelloFresh. Honestly? Truly. Honestly, truly, it is the honesty box time. Time for us to get our honesty on. Oh, yes. Hi, Hi, faves. You can call me Annie or whatever name you like. We're just going to go with Annie. That's fine. (laughs) I am writing to get both of your perspectives on a dilemma I'm facing. Years ago, I graduated. I started a graduate program, and because life happened, I ended up three credits short of obtaining my degree. Mm. Now that some time has lapsed, I will have to reapply to the school and may or may not receive credit for my previous coursework. Hmm. What are your thoughts on going back to finish my degree? Kia, as an academic advisor, what do you suggest? Jade, as a married mom, what do you think about adding another obligation to an already full plate? With respect and true adoration of all you do, Annie. P.S. Kia, my daughter was one of the tiny tots that did a reading at church two weeks ago. My face lit up when I saw you in the choir. It was great to see you sharing your gift. Ha! Oh, God. Okay, so. No, I'm not. Context. So at church this Sunday in April, they had the, the young tiny tots lead at the early morning service. And one of the one of the little tiny tiniest tots read the scripture, and I don't know which one uh, was Annie's Annie's daughter, but there was one little girl who was using some ten dollar words, like she she was reading the Bible. <laughs> I don't remember which which uh, scripture she was given to read, but she said like hermeneutic, and I was like, "Go, hey, you better." Reading better than most adults. So I'm sure that that's what Annie was referring to in terms of, because I got my whole life I love. Because I mean, it's just a little, a little, little tiny girl up there reading these big people words. And I was like, you better read, daughter, read. Um, so yeah, so good. So yeah, Annie. It. Okay. Let's talk about your sitch. Um, yeah. I think this is all begin. This all goes back to why you want your degree and yeah, why you want your degree. I, I think that that's going to help you. Yeah, I think exactly that's where you, exactly we have to start there. Do you want this degree? Why do you want it? Do you feel like you need it? We have, I think those are the questions that you need to start with answering. And I think that that will probably guide, um, 
your next steps. So in terms of whether or not um, you can, you still have, you, you know, okay, depending upon, let me get myself together. So in terms of whether or not you'll get all your credits, that is contingent upon a lot of different factors. Most schools have timeout policy. So if you don't complete your degree within 10 years, mm -hmm. then you will be timed out. Not necessarily because they're hating, but because, you know, the way education is set up, like it's connected to kind of like, you know, cu curriculum and all that stuff is, is driven by what's going on in the world. The skills and the things that you learned 10 years ago may not be applicable. Like it's not the cutting edge stuff. So it may be absolutely right. warranted um, right. and critical for you to, to start over if you, if you, if it has been that, that, um, Start that over. much time has last, if it, if it last, if it has been that long. Um, so I think, um, in that regard, I would get as much information as possible beforehand. Um, just general information. What's the timeout policy at the institution? Uh, most, even if there is a timeout policy, I doubt that all of your credits will, um, not be accepted like the gen eds and those kinds of preliminary things, I'm sure like they won't make you retake mm -hmm. certain things. Um, but there may be some, some things that may have changed. It may, cause a lot of times programs change. So like what was required 10 years ago might not be required now. They may have added some new requirements. So there are some, there's some nuance and kind of like institution mm -hmm. program specific things that you gotta know, um, that will, help you to have what you need in order to weigh your options uh, appropriately. So I would start there. Um, it would be best if you could find an ally, someone who knew you when you were there, however many years ago, and may be available and or willing to help you navigate this process. You, It would be good to have an inside person if you can get one. Um, yeah, I hope that's helpful. Let me know. Keep me up updated. If there's any way that I can be more helpful after you have more information, let me know. But I'll I'll defer to you now for your phase of the question, sis. No, I um I, I mine is actually exactly the same. Um, I think adding another obligation. If your plate is full, then I ask the same question that Kia does. What are you going back to school for? How important it is? How important is it to you? How important is it to whatever you're doing currently um, in your career? How much of an impact is it going to make? So I, you know, I think all of those things are really important. Um, but it sounds like you didn't even know. You don't even know yet if you're going to have to repeat any previous coursework. So like Kia said, I would do all of my research and find out what you'll have to retake in the first place you know, you could be freaking out for nothing. Right. So um, I would just do all of my research. I would get all of my ducks in a row and see what it is that you actually have to do. Because if you could end up lucky and then they tell you, you just have those three, those three credits that you need to do. And then of course, we're going to tell you to go do those three cr credits and so that we can read your name next to graduation season. You know what I I'm just, saying? I mean, feel free but, to tell me to mind my business, but I am very curious to know what kept you from getting them three credits taken care of in the first place, because three credits like sis, I'm sure you've heard this. I'm, I'm not trying to shame you, but like one class, you could have done an independent study an internship. I need to know <laughs> what held you up. She said life, life happened. happened. Maybe it was a Maybe baby. Maybe it was, but I mean, I still feel like three credits is a long time. It's a long time to be three credits away from a degree. Like you can do three credits in the summer. You can do one credit at a time. If you could. Procrastination is a, procrastination real. Is a real true. disease. It's a real disease. And a lot of us suffer from, suffer from it chronically. <laughs> And we've got to get, we've got to do better. I am a part of that club. And guys, we are going to hold each other accountable and pull ourselves from this place so that we don't find ourselves years later saying that we are three credits short of, of, of a graduate, of a graduate degree. <laughs> so that is not making fun of you, Annie. You are our sis. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to see you win. And so, yeah, go do your work and then come back and report back and, and let Kia know if you have any questions. Totes, my goats. And, uh, and, and give that little 
that little daughter a kiss from us. Honey, just tell her to just keep on reading. Just keep right on reading just like that. That's how you keep build the vocabulary. On, keep keeping on. No escape. That's it. Let's move on. Let's go put our petty on parade for a second and get out of here. All right. And I want to be very responsible of the things I say to my sister. Because everybody know I can be real petty. P-E to the T-T-Y, honey. Put your petty on parade. Put your petty on parade. So, <laughs> um, my petty peeve this week are for the news who play their music on levels that sound like they have speakers on the outside of their car. There's no reason on this rancid earth that we are living on right now. Rancid. There's no reason why I should be in my bedroom and I can sing along every single lyric of what's coming out of your car. There's no reason that should be happening. If I can hear your music that clearly in my bedroom and you are in your car on the street, (laughs) what is your hearing like? (laughs) What makes you think that we want to hear what your black ass is playing in your car? What makes you think that other niggas want to partake? Like they're not already enjoying the music that's coming out of their car or out of their headphones. Like what makes you think that you are so important that everybody else has to stop what they're doing and listen to you, listen to you blast Neo at Mm. 137. Mm. It don't even be good songs. It'd be, it'd be like Meek Mills, which scares the entire neighborhood. Or it's like Neo. I'm like, or like, it's something that nobody has any interest in listening to whatsoever. They blast an old ass A. Marie song. I'm like, really? You really thought the hood wants to hear that right now? It don't even be like Anita. It don't even be anything like that. It's just something that nobody has any interest in listening to. Might as well be blasting an Azalea Banks song. Oh, Azalea. Hyena. But um, <laughs> I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. I said what I said. But um, yeah, that's that's my petty peeve this week. Like nobody cares about what you're listening to. Humble yourself and turn your fucking music down before you kill your eardrums. Honey, hearing aids are not cheap. They're not. I don't know if insurance covers them, but the more you know. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, um, I have a petty peeve related to the holiday weekend. Um, shout out to all the moms. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you, sis. Thank you, sis. So, uh, this is a petty peeve. Do, don't ask, don't ask single women when they want to, when, when they're going to have a family or Oh, yeah. Man. Or like, if I just feel like I think we all should be cautious about about how we broach conversations with strangers about very personal, personal matters. Um, yeah. And just think twice um, about about things that you say to women on Mother's Day, because there are those who are dealing with different things, right? So you don't want to, or you should not want to, trigger. right? You should not want to ever trigger um, anybody around, you know, mom being a mom, motherhood. You don't know what people are dealing with. Please, I beg you, <laughs> don't ask. What? <laughs> It's okay to ask somebody if they have kids because that's a yes or no. But when you start to yeah. probing, well, you are or acting shocked, like the, that's, that's when you get one. into the reactions right. and the whys, that's where you start enter, entering dangerous that's territory. A, that's a big one. So yeah, um, and I will also caution you to just be careful of how you engage with the expected mothers on those kinds of days as well. Right. So that Mm -hmm. I was talking to a friend of mine who is expecting and having, um, not, I don't want to say complications, but you know, she's a little bit older, so she's a high risk pregnancy and Mm -hmm. just has some general apprehension around being a mom. 
uh, going mm. through the actual act of labor and then, you know, navigating m- being a mom. Uh, so mm-hmm. I just don't think it's now's not the time for you to be asking a whole bunch of questions about, do you have this? Do you have that? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for that? Because in many cases, I don't feel like it's helpful. It's Let me just let me. It's never the time. Just it's never really the time for your nosiness. It's never the time for you. Especially when you don't know, especially yeah. if you don't know a person mm-hmm. like this happens a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Right. Just pe- walking up to people because you see that they're pregnant. You don't know the conditions under which they became pregnant. You don't know the specifics of their pregnancy. Mm-hmm. It's OK to be happy and excited and it's OK to encourage and want to celebrate. But I just think that we should be tactful yep. in how we do yep. it. And you don't want to be leading or make any assumptions about anything that you don't have any knowledge of. So leave it. Keep it simple. Say Happy Mother's Day. I have people going to say Happy Mother's Day to me. People say Happy Mother's Day to me all day on Mother's Day. And I don't have to get into the logistics. I just say thank you. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you so much. Like, thank you. I don't have my my uterus has never been occupied. (laughs) But I just say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Man, I don't even con- when but, people are pregnant and I know they're pregnant, I still won't even say nothing until they identify the fact that they're pregnant. Exactly. There was a lady I met at at Tristan's cousin's baby shower. She's pregnant with twins. Man, I didn't say nothing about her pregnancy until somebody said she her baby showers next week. I said, "Well, congratulations." Right. I did not even acknowledge until somebody's going to confirm that you're even pregnant. Y'all got to be out here minding your own business. You're not entitled to know anything about another woman's body or about her pregnancy. Mm. Um, my friend was telling me how she she would rather not share the name that she selected for her child. And she's been so shocked that people have taken offense to that. How? Like she's OK with saying she's OK with saying, you know, revealing the gender. But you know, when people ask if she has a name, she says yes. And then when they probe into what it is and she says that she would rather not share, people get in their bag. And I think that is fascinating. Me too. Because you are not entitled to know anything about another person's life. Nothing. It's not your business. Just mind it. Just mind your business. That's it. And that concludes my petty peeve. And that is actually the a wonderful segue into concluding our show. Mind mm-hmm. your business. <laughs> Moisturize. And drink your water. Why, sis? Because your black will crack if it's dry. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.